Okay, welcome. Welcome to Tech Cafeteria. Uh, my name is Dwayne. I'm one of the co-founders here at Gaslight. We're an agile software development shop here in Cincinnati, obviously, because we're in Cincinnati. Um, and thank you for coming. Hope you're enjoying the uh, cafeteria style food, the hamburgers and the fries and stuff. It looks like I gotta get to that here in just a second myself. Anyway, a couple quick things before we get started. Um, first, uh, mark your calendars for August 3rd. We'll have Steve Caldwell, the CEO and co-founder of Strap here to talk about the Internet of Things uh, at our next event. So that ought to be pretty cool. And then second, uh, when we wrap things up today, uh, it would be a big help if you could uh, take your tray and scrape off the food in the bin and then just put the tray in the back uh, before you leave if that's possible. Um, we'd appreciate that. But now for the main event, we have with us today um, Sam Hatchett. Uh, he's the CTO of uh, City Logics, and they're an innovative uh, water analytics company. He designs and builds software to help make sense of the massive volumes of data that water utilities collect. He's going to talk about how his company is applying the latest technology to municipal water systems and help some of those uh, urgent needs. So, Sam? That sounds great. Did I, did I write that? That's, that's amazing. That's great. <laughs> so, so hi. Um, I'm Sam Hatchett. I'm a, a part of a company called City Logics, um, and we'll get into what that means um, as we go forward. I'd like to front load some audience participation, though, in between bites. Um, who who are you? Who are you? Um, programmers, people who programs, uh, business people, entrepreneurs. None of those, one of those. Um, creatives, designers, artists, some of that. Managers of people, one of those, two of those. Very cool. Uh, scientists, no. Anybody looking for a job? Be honest, unless your boss is sitting next to you. No. <laughs> um, so how many of you, again by hands, how many of you um, feel like you have a pretty good idea of all the steps that, say, a molecule of water goes through between the time it's floating along in the Ohio River and, and the time when it is now sitting inside your stomach? Nobody. That's fantastic. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, all of this would be a waste. So, um, so, hello, there are pipes under your feet that carry water from some sort of treatment works to the point of use. That's your home, your business. You turn on the tap and there's water there. You turn on the tap and there's water there because um, of a massive investment in pipe infrastructure that is, that is buried under your feet. Um, these systems were put into place really by our grandparents, great-grandparents generation. Um, and essentially not touched since then. We are not investing in the ways that we need to be investing. American Society of Civil Engineers keeps giving us these horrible failing grades for our water infrastructure, right? We just keep flunking year after year. Um, and that is because we are not investing in the ways that, that we need to. And a lot of that investment is just got to replace the pipes because they, they break, they leak, okay? Um, but, but this cannot be solved with money alone. And there is, this, there is this sort of lingering sense of dread over this entire industry that, oh gosh, we have to be smarter. And, 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 and also, we don't even know what that means, okay? Um, so a lot of money is needed, but we also need to be smarter. Um, somewhere's around three trillion gallons a year of treated water is lost due to leakage in the United States, okay? This is around a quarter of all the water that's treated. We just don't know where it goes. It leaks. It's gone away. Okay? It's, it's, it's breaks. It's leaks. It's um, uh, meters that don't work. Okay? It's unaccounted for. It's a mystery. Um, <clears throat> so, so what is a water utility? Okay? What, is a, what, is, what does that mean? Uh, there are many different aspects to a water utility, one of which is the, the hard assets, that's the metal in the ground, it's the pipes, valves, pumps, you've seen these, we've got a hot mic here, 
You've seen these massive elevated storage tanks, you know, that sit above. That's the Florence Yall tank, okay? That's got a million gallons of water in it, okay, ready to be used. Um, it's massive reservoirs, treatment facilities, it's raw sources, rivers, aquifers. It's the chemicals we, we take out of the water and the chemicals we put into the water, okay? Chlorine, fluoride, or the phosphates, corrosion inhibitors, uh, water softeners, okay? A water utility is also a business. It's selling water. But what does selling water mean? Okay, did you know that when you pay your water bill, most of what you're paying is salaries for the people who work at the utility, okay? The second thing you're paying for, and there's some variation, but generally the second thing you're paying for is the electricity it took to pump water to you because water is heavy. It takes a lot of energy to pump. Uh, the third thing you're paying for is renewal of those hard assets. And so that's what you're buying when you're buying water. You're not buying the water, you're buying all of the steps it took to get it to you. Um, a water utility is also uh, an information system in a way. It's, it's a massive city scale distributed control system. Okay, this is called SCADA, Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. This is uh, this sort of the industrial internet of things before that was even a word. Um, and it's this, uh, this network of devices that that measure certain properties of, of the system, like the big tanks you see, we know what the levels are because we're measuring them and transmitting that to a, to a central control center. And from that control center, we can also remotely control, you know, huge, you know, big megawatt, you know, hydro turbines to, to pump water around and actuate valves to change the way that water moves through the system. Uh, very complicated, this is municipal scale automation and sensing, this is an IT issue. Um, a water utility can also be thought of as, as having a model. Now, does anyone know what I mean when I say model? What is a model? It's more audience participation. What is a model? Software people, what is, a, what is a data model? Be pithy. Basic layout. So, okay, so it could be said, data. could be said a data model. What's that? Data. It's your data. It's, it's your data, yeah. So a data model, um, I would say in general terms, is like, is, is a domain abstraction that carries with it some of the important attributes and qualities of, of the thing that you want to know about. Um, but that's a data model, right? So this is, this is a question I ask myself every day, okay? And I'm asking you every day, too. Um, so that's a data model, but is, that, is, is the information about your domain relevant without, without business logic? I would say it's not, right? So to put the information in context and make that information interactive, you need the business logic too. Uh, those two things combined is one way to think of what is a model. Or in other words, a model is a set of principles, equations, relationships that allow you to predict something, okay? That's, that's the why. Why do we have a model? Um, so that we can predict something that we didn't know before. Um, so we have models of water, okay? Those exist. Um, and it all started uh, probably much, much further before 250 BC, but, but at least historically speaking with Archimedes. I won't go through this list. This is just something I assembled for myself to help understand where, where, do, where does my profession come from? Where, where have these thoughts been generated? Who have they gone through? Um, and what am, I, what am I wrapping up in software when I, when I do what I do? Um, and this is by no means an exhaustive list. It's just some of my favorite milestones along the way. But the point being, this is a long and illustrious history of trying to understand the movement of fluids through different kinds of, of, of media. Um, and this is really complicated stuff, okay? It's incredibly complicated, but um, we think we've got to boil down to a science, okay? We think we understand most of the ways that water is moved or resists movement through pipes, um, and we can apply that knowledge. Um, we also have information about where all the buried pipes are in general. Some, some pipes we don't know where they are, but that's another matter. Um, and the modern equivalent of the hand-drawn map is a GIS, Ge Geographical Information System. So we know where, where these pipes are, we know some of the physical characteristics, their sizes, how they're connected, how they're valved or not valved. Um, 
And we also have this, uh, this notion of a, of, a, of, a, of a junction, okay? So these black dots, this represents a, a point of use. That's where water leaves the system. You turn on your tap, your neighbors turn on your tap. So each black dot could be a few to, to a dozen or so homes and businesses drawing water out of the system. So all this stuff together can be combined into, uh, into what passes for a model, okay? Um, now, I wrote in the teaser to this, uh, to this talk that, um, that we're going to cover sort of why, uh, how water systems are similar to Facebook. Is anyone starting to see this picture? How is this like Facebook? Lots of connections. Connections. It's a graph. It's a graph. Facebook, Twitter, these are social graphs. Uh, a water system is a, is a physical graph. It's a physical graph buried under your feet. And it is, to be fair, it is social to the degree that your social connections are correlated with geography. But, um, but it is a physical graph and, and you are connected with everyone else in the system uh, in, in, a, in a myriad of ways, hydraulically, physically, mechanically, et cetera. This is a system that, that lies below the surface. <clears throat> So, okay, so we've got uh, what is called a hydraulic model, okay? We've got all of this information that we can represent mathematically, algorithmically. We've got all the sort of fluid mechanical properties of water and how it moves and resists movement. Um, we know what infrastructure is buried. This is the pipe geometry, how it's valved and pumped. Um, we also have assumptions about how people are using water and how, how water is being treated and put into the system. So all of that together, uh, is considered a hydraulic model, and these things exist, and most utilities have them. <clears throat> and at the at the core of this model is is a is a set of not is a nonlinear relationship between, for every single pipe in the system, between the the pressure at one end of the pipe and the pressure at the other end of the pipe, and the resulting flow through that pipe. And that's a that's a complicated relationship. Um, and for for a system like Cincinnati, you know, below your feet, um, their hydraulic model has. Uh, consist of close to a quarter million nonlinear equations that all have to be solved simultaneously to say anything meaningful about what is going on in that system, okay? Um, and, and, and again, those relationships vary depending on physical properties of the pipes, any bends or fittings that are going to change the direction of the water, um, temperature of the water even, just changes the viscosity of the, of the substance. There's a giant set of nonlinear equations. And the math is, I would say, not trivial. Okay, but the forebears, which we've seen before, have, have done a pretty good job, I would say, of wrapping this up into a into a into a codified science that we can that we can exploit through software, and we do. Um, and that's called the hydraulic model. Now, now these models are useful for describing the properties and behavior of major piping, valving, pumping components of the distribution system, um, and they exist in order to um, be used over a design horizon. So, so we're going to use the hydraulic model to ensure that if a new subdivision goes in, we have the supply that's going to, that's going to meet that new set of customer demands in that location. Or we can, we can analyze this model to make sure that we have enough uh, storage to fight fires, which is something that water utilities are concerned about, obviously, because the last thing a firefighter wants to see when they drive up to the scene is, well, we don't have any water, you know, because lives could be at, at on hanging in the balance. Um, and again, these models have been useful over a design horizon, which means, which means, you know, decades. And the important point here is that while models are great and dandy, um, no water utility knows the state of their entire system at any given moment, okay? You may be surprised by that. I was when I first started, started bumping around in this field because I'm used to a world where I can go check, where's my package, okay? At any moment in time, I can know where my package is. I can go to Duke Energy, and I can see outages live, you know, as they're being reported, okay? I'm used to, I'm used to that reality. I'm not used to <clears throat> this sort of squishy mess that's underground that we don't really know what's going on. We measure some things directly, and those things we know, but that set of measurements is incredibly sparse in relation to the vast size and complexity of the system that's underground, okay? But it is not a new idea to say, well, I want to know the state of the entire system at a given moment in time, okay? 
Um, this industry has been talking about it for, for decades. I've read papers from the 70s suggesting, okay, why don't we use these distributed control systems because we know what's going on in some of the areas in combination with these planning models which have all the fluid dynamic properties and we combine them in some way to tell us something meaningful about the state of the entire system, okay, now and maybe short-term forecasts into the future. Um, so, so while there's been a lot of interest in the industry in, in that approach, it never really has taken hold outside of a research framework, okay? Because it's hard, it turns out, okay? <laughs> um, so, so I did this, I created software for the US EPA, this was my PhD work. Um, so this is, I won't say it's a solved problem, but we're getting very close to being able to represent the entire system uh, at any point in time that is under your feet. And why does a utility want to do this, okay? Um, a utility may want to know things like, you know, where is there likely to be locations of bad water quality? Okay, think Flint, right? Um, where are there likely pipe breaks in the system that I need to know about before they start eroding road surfaces, taking out homes and businesses? This is a lot of water we're moving around. Um, I want to know, is the system maintaining adequate storage for fighting fires through day-to-day -day operations? Are there, are there times during the day where it's more risky for me as a water utility operating the system? Am I at risk of running out of water if there's a fire? Um, I want to find other operational anomalies too. I want to know if I'm wasting energy. I want to know if I'm wasting chemicals because those cost money. Um, so that's what we've done, okay? We have this core innovation which says now we have the technology to represent the state of the entire system at any moment in time from the past to the present moment and short-term forecasts. What do we do with that? Well, we commercialize it, okay? That's why CityLogix exists. This is part, this is, uh, this is a small piece of that puzzle of how do we be smarter in the water industry and what does being smarter mean, okay? Um, so what are we doing with this innovation, okay? We're commercializing it in a number of ways. Uh, one interesting way is by um, giving a, is this animated? That's cool. Um, is by giving a real time, essentially a weather map, but instead of weather, this is showing how old the water is how long it has taken, think of it like a molecule of water was treated and now it is this many hours old by the time someone uses it, okay? The idea being you wanna minimize the age of the water by the time you use it um, because water, uh, water, you don't want the water to get old in the system. There are, there are potentially public health consequences to that. Um, and so this is, this is, for instance, Hillsborough County uh, near Tampa in Florida. <coughs> we're working with to develop this weather map, but it's a weather map that they can control, right? So, so they can monitor day to day what, is the, uh, what are the important metrics related to the quality of that water in the system and, and how can I optimize the way I'm operating the system um, just by changing when I, when I schedule my pumps to turn on and off, the ways that I valve off the system to get water to recirculate uh, within there. Uh, so, so, so this is this is a problem the industry wants to solve: is getting fresher water to you for cheaper. Another way we're innovating in this space is uh, this guy. This guy is running your system. Okay, he sits down for a 12-hour shift, and he has all these monitors in front of him, and he's responsible for turning on massive pumps and turning them off, and filling tanks, and making sure there's adequate uh, adequate water in the system for you to use for watering your lawn, or drinking, or taking a shower, or whatever. Um, but right now, this guy cannot do this. And I don't mean he can't take a break to play video games. What I mean is he cannot sit down in front of a fake system and think up some better way to run it, okay? If he has an idea, he has to try it out on a real system. <laughs> and if that's not shocking, I don't know what will be shocking to you, um, right? This is a mission critical system. It must not fail. And so innovation is discouraged, right? I don't want to try something new because what I did yesterday worked and so let's just keep doing that until something breaks and we'll figure out something else. Um, so this is not a new idea, okay? Running a simulation of a system. This is SimCity. Um, this, is, this is an idea used by NASA, used by many people, but NASA is like the sexy example. So, so what does NASA do when they're putting together a mission? They don't just go do the mission, right? No, they take the real telemetry, they bottle it up into a, into a simulation, they put it in the matrix, right? They take their mission control center, their massive room with all the computers and the people running the mission, and they, and they take that mission control center, they unplug it from the real telemetry, and they, and they move the cables over and they plug it into 
the matrix. Okay, they plug it into a simulation, and they run the mission over and over and over and over again with different contingencies. And they say, well, I think I think we can run the mission in this way instead, and let's try that and see if we're more efficient with it. Um, and, and this is how they learn. This is how they train. And it could be said, this is how one must learn and be trained for something that is so mission critical as a water system. So this is, this is something that we're doing for the water industry as well. Um, speaking of stealing great ideas from other industries, uh, this is a cloud, right? This is the cloud, do we agree? Um, this is a, a consolidated mass of, of hardware and processing capabilities. And all of these machines, so, so I'm gonna describe to you the idea that we're stealing, okay? So all of these machines um, are, just, are just producers of information. They ju they're just producing all kinds of information. CPU temperatures, fan speeds, database you know, throughput, dropped connections, uh, just on and on and on. Um, and, and a data center this, you know, of reasonable size may be producing billions of data points a second, right? And you want to use that data for something, okay? So, so what people have done is they've, they've hired Mr. Chuck Taylor Converse to go check on every machine, right? No, they have not done that. They have designed, in the open source, they have designed high efficiency time series databases and flexible dashboarding environments to track down problems, okay? Wow, that sounds like something great that we can use. Um, and it is. So, so we're stealing this idea from the monitoring DevOps community. Um, we're using a stack that, that may be familiar to some of you. These are open source technologies that are extremely useful, flexible, powerful. You can essentially take them off the shelf and start using them. Um, and so for very cheap, um, and actually this is a free product that we're offering to water utilities, um, to be able to, to mirror out all of their you know, historical uh, time series data to the cloud to be distributed through web and mobile dashboards anywhere in the world or shared with engineering companies or shared with other water utilities. Um, and, and, and no longer does the data have to be bottled up and hard to get to, now it's democratized, right? And in addition to that, this is also a useful platform for broadcasting those really important metrics like where might I have low water quality? Uh, do I going to send out an alert through the dashboard or something like that? Um, so again, great ideas from, from the monitoring IT DevOps community, open source software, take it off the shelf, run with it. Um, I'm, I'm closing up now. We are we're working at nine different um, water utilities. The last one is a water utility that must not be named. Um, on recorded media, um, <clears throat> but all of these utilities uh, and, the, and the customers um, see an opportunity here to be smarter and, and to figure out what being smarter means, okay? And, and these are the early adopters. These are the people who say, um, yes, I see the inherent value in being able to say something about the entire state of my system at any moment in time up to the present moment and a short-term forecast. And I believe in the value of that, and I want to build something on top of that, the water quality map, okay, that I can control. I want to build the system simulator to train my operators. Um, I, want to, I want to broadcast important metrics about, about the operation of my system to a, to a, to a distributed organization, okay? So, so, so these are the utilities that I think are really leading the pack uh, in regards to adopting new technology. Um, and we're very lucky, I think, to live in the greater Cincinnati area and, and being served by that, uh, by that water utility. So special shout out to them.